With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Friday, April 29th, 2016. Flint Mayor Karen Weaver says that the new water plant head is working well with the city. Jaquanda Johnson of the Flint Journal reports that Joe Lisa McDay has temporarily replaced Michael Glasgow, who is facing multiple charges including two counts of tampering with evidence in connection with the water crisis. McDay holds a bachelor's and master's degree in chemistry and says that she is only one of the many hardworking employees striving to provide quality service to this great city, adding that she is truly honored to take on this important role. A press release from the city of Flint announces that there are still petitions available to run for the Flint Board of Education. Persons interested in running for one of the remaining six-year terms and the one partial term must file petitions with the city clerk by July 26th. Eligibility requirements include that a candidate must be at least 18 and a resident within the Flint Public School District. Further details are available through the city clerk's office. The Supreme Court yesterday approved a rule change that would let U.S. judges issue search warrants for access to computers located in any jurisdiction. Reuters reports that despite opposition from civil liberties groups and the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Supreme Court bowed to the U.S. Justice Department's request to allegedly modernize the criminal code for the digital age, allegedly promising not to abuse their newfound hacking authority. Google, the ACLU, and other civil liberties groups contend that the proposed changes would vastly expand the FBI's ability to conduct mass hacks on computer networks. Senator Rod Wyden of Oregon condemned the rule change as having significant consequences for Americans' privacy and vowed to introduce legislation to reverse the decision, adding that under the proposed rules, the government would now be able to obtain a single warrant to access every computer, tablet, smartphone, or device connected to the Internet. An alleged opinion on FineLaw.com says that although the Fourth Amendment prevents the government from executing unreasonable searches and seizures, the Fourth Amendment may not apply when a person does not have legitimate expectation of privacy. This opinion allegedly implies that all people on the Internet have no expectation of privacy and are subject to any search or seizure at the discretion of any law enforcement agency. A spokesman for the Justice Department says that the change allegedly does not authorize anything more than what is already permitted by the law, except allowing a single warrant to be used for any jurisdiction, for any reason, anywhere on the planet. Facebook.com's latest transparency report covering the second half of 2015 was released, and the social networking site says it continues to see an uptick in government requests for user data worldwide. VentureBeat.com reports that the company revealed for the first time that approximately 60% of all government requests come with a gag order prohibiting the company from even notifying users. Chris Sonderby, Facebook's deputy general counsel, says that the company has emphasized many times that they do not provide any government backdoors or direct access to their users' data, adding that Facebook scrutinizes each request for user data they receive for legal sufficiency no matter which country makes the request. In defense of his company's claims, Sonderby points to a bill that was advocated by Facebook and subsequently passed unanimously by the U.S. House of Representatives this week that could require law enforcement to obtain a search warrant before asking technology companies to hand over old emails. The bill is currently in the Senate awaiting a vote. However, it is unclear how the decision by the Supreme Court will affect the power of this bill. And finally, a plan to spur discussion about the role of women in military backfired. California Representative Duncan Hunter of California, during a House Armed Services Committee hearing, introduced a bill that he was openly admitting that he did not he did not and would not support. The bill could require all women to register for the draft at age 18. Hunter, a former U.S. Marine and unabashed opponent of women being on the front lines, introduced the bill in hopes that it could spur discussion of what being on the front lines actually entails, using graphic language and dire examples of what is necessary of combat personnel hoping that his fellow lawmakers could finally see how gruesome a draft would be for women. Unfortunately, Democratic Congresswomen viewed this as an opportunity to fulfill their agenda in bringing alleged gender equality to the U.S. military and voted to approve the amendment 32-30. to For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.